Now this tutorial will go over white blood cells and platelets. So leukocytes are white blood cells. And again, you wanna be familiar with both terms. These are um, involved in our defenses. So they're really involved in with the immune system. They're part of the immune system. They can be divided according to the presence or absence of granules in the cytoplasm. In, we divide them into granulocytes um, and agranulocytes. Granulocytes means that they do have these cytoplasmic granules. And when we stain them with these different stains, we'll get different colors. So if the granules are red in color, we call those as eosinophils. If they're blue, they, those are basophils. If they're neutral, so kind of like a purple, somewhere between red and blue, that would, those, we call those neutrophils. The agranulocytes, they could, do not have the cytoplasmic granules. You can't see them under a light microscope. And those are either lymphocytes or monocytes. And you'll see here monocytes slash macrophages because, again, they're the same cell. Um, when they're circulating the bloodstream, we call them monocytes. As soon as they leave the bloodstream into the um, tissue, they are now changing into these very um, aggressively phagocytic cells known as macrophages. Now, what are the basic functions of leukocytes? Well, depending on, they're all involved with immunity, but you know, each cell tends to have like more of an importance, um, more kind of more specific action. So neutrophils are part of the phagocytic cells. Um, your phagocytic cells are make basically the MNMs. Okay, so macrophage, N stands for neutrophils, and the second M are monocytes. So the MNM cells are your phagocytic cells. Neutrophils are the first responders. So as soon as somebody has anything going on, okay, whether it's an infection or inflammation, the first cell to come would be our neutrophils. They are highly, they'll increase um, a lot, especially in bacterial infections. Okay, um, the nuclei of the neutrophils look very, um, they're polymorphic, means that they have these different shapes. They're made out of more than one lobule. They're multilobular nuclei. Eosinophils, those fight off invasions, um, especially in the presence of parasites. So like worms, for example. Okay, these, if, if you have a patient that has eosinophilia, which is an increase in the number of eosinophils, you want to start looking for parasites somewhere in the body. Basophils, um, these are increase, especially in allergies. Okay, the granules have these little chemicals. So a chemical known as heparin, heparin is a blood thinner. And um, other granules store histamine, which leads to the dilation, the vasodilation of blood vessels, which we experience in the uh, when we have inflammation or if there's an allergic reaction. <clears throat> so these basophils <clears throat> um, store heparin and histamine. Monocytes, as I mentioned before, these are phagocytic cells. Uh, they leave the bloodstream to become macrophages in the tissue. And lymphocytes, those are the cells of immunity, meaning that those are the more, um, they target specific uh, pathogens. They target specific germs trying to enter the body. And there are two different kinds of lymphocytes. We've got T lymphocytes, and those are kind of more aggressive kind. They attack directly. They are known as the, um, for example, we've got cytotoxic T cell and um, helper T cells. And they're just a whole other bunch of T cells that, again, those are more aggressive. They do the attack and the killing of the pathogens on their own. If you compare that to the B lymphocytes, B lymphocytes change into a cell known as a plasma cell, and then these plasma cells produce antibodies. Um, these antibodies circulate in the blood, and that is why we call, you know, the, the um, function of the B lymphocytes would be to maintain what is known as humoral immunity. So humoral, again, coming from the fact that these um, antibodies circulate within the bloodstream. The platelets are um, not real uh, cells. 
Those are cytoplasmic fragments of that bigger cell but that we call the megakaryocyte. They do not have a nucleus, just like the RBCs don't. Okay, they pinch off of that huge cell and then they enter into the circulation. So since everything is made in the bone marrow, we have different growth factors that are going to stimulate the production um, of these individual cells. So these are known as the hematopoietic growth factors. And again, it's a plural because well, there are so many of these growth factors and usually these, uh, you know, each growth factor is going to stimulate the production of one or two cells in particular. So we already know that erythropoietin is the growth factor for RBCs, so it will stimulate the production of erythrocytes. The colony stimulating factors stimulate granulocyte and monocyte production. Interleukins, those are going to stimulate the production of our different white blood cells. Thrombopoietin, thrombo comes from the thrombocyte, which is the nickname for platelets. So thrombopoietin will stimulate the production of platelets from the megakaryocytes. And stem cell factor, that is actually going to stimulate the stem cells. So you'll eventually end up with producing lots of different types of blood cells. In the next tutorial, we'll talk a little bit about the cardiac cycle.